take a look at this. This is an MRI scan of my tongue as I'm speaking, and you can see it's pretty huge. But speaking isn't the only thing you need your tongue for. One of the best things it does is help you taste. Your tongue is covered in small hair-like projections, as I'm going to show you. Right, Zand, open your mouth nice and wide. Ugh! Not hair like that. I said hair-like projections. Can't see them with your naked eye, so take a look at this. This is a super close-up of your tongue. This red blob is called a papilla. Your taste buds sit on the side of it, and they contain tiny hair-like projections called microvilli to help you taste. And if you look at your tongue, the bumps you can see are the papillae. And the more papilla you have on your tongue, the more taste buds you have, and the more sensitive to taste you are. And you have more of them than we do. Because we're doctors. No, Zahn, because we're adults. We have around 5,000 covering our tongues, but you have 10,000. That's twice as many. And to prove it, Chris, I've brought in a sample. This sample is nine years old. This isn't a sample, it's a child. Anyway, the point is, we're going to compare Chris's papillae with the samples. But first, I need to cover your tongues in blue food dye. The blue dye will show up all the papillae. And now, the sample. I have a name you know, and it's Miley. Very noisy sample. Give me your tongue. Nice blue tongue, Hermione. Zand is putting a glass slide on both our tongues to make it easier to count the papillae. Chris's papillae are those little pale dots right there. And these are Hermione's. You can see that there's way more on her tongue, and that means more taste buds. Good job, Hermione. As we get older, your taste buds deteriorate they aren't replaced, which is why you will be much more sensitive to strong flavours like garlic than your mum or dad. There are certain things, though, like a cold, <laughs> that can play havoc with everybody's sense of taste. But why would having a bunged-up nose affect your taste? Well, we're going to show you. Darned, meet Mr Big Mouth. Hello. Ah, you've cut him in half. Why don't you call him Mr Cut in Half? Darned. Now, when you eat food, odour molecules are released and swirl around your mouth, but also right up into this. This is the passage that connects your mouth to your nose. And right up here, at the back of your nose, are lots of sensors called olfactory receptors, which sense and identify different odour or smell molecules and tell your brain what it is you're tasting. So, to show you this, we're going to use an equally oversized bit of kit. The smell molecule blower thingy. Also, we'll need our safety equipment and these polystyrene balls to represent those smell or odour molecules. Three, two, one, blow! We're cheating a bit because our smell molecules are being blown in, but inside your body, the smell molecules in food are released naturally as you chew. Wow, that worked really well! You can see how the smell molecules race through the back of the mouth and up the tube connecting it to the nose and right onto the olfactory receptors, which instantly recognise the smell and tell your brain what you're tasting. And your olfactory receptors can also protect you because they can tell if something is bad before you eat it. As soon as they whiff something like off milk, they alert your brain so you know not to eat it. But Zant, what would happen if Mr Big Mouth got a cold? That would be disgusting. We're going to need a lot of snot. We're smearing our snot inside the passages of our giant mouth and nose, just like when you have a cold. Let's see what happens now that Mr Big Mouth has got a big cold. Ready? Go. Look. This time, the odour molecules are getting stuck in the snot. They aren't getting anywhere near the olfactory receptors. And that means no taste. Yeah, Mr Big Nose wouldn't be able to taste anything at all. Except for that one tiny polystyrene ball. So we've shown you that, like Hermione's tongue, you've got twice the number of taste buds as us, or your mum and dad, or any adult. But as good as your tongue is, you also need your nose if you really want to savour a flavour. <laughs> An ordinary town with ordinary people. Well, except for one person. But what makes him so special? OK, 
Can I have an ice cream, please? A lot of people like ice cream, Chris. Oh, is it that he's gone for boring vanilla when he could have had mint chocolate chip? Oh, look forward to this all day. No, nope. in fact, this man is hiding an amazing body. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Make it stop! Make it stop! This is Stephen Taylor, and he has the world's longest tongue. How long, you ask? Well, I was just about to. Well, his record-breaking tongue measures a massive 10 centimetres from the tip to his lip. That's as long as a sausage. So what's it like having such a long tongue? The advantages of having a long tongue are, um, well, I can eat a yoghurt without using a spoon. So it saves on the washing up. So I think you may still have to wash that beard. But although lizard tongue Stephen could probably lap up an ice cream quicker than you, don't worry, you're not missing out when it comes to flavour. Because taste buds don't just live on your tongue. In fact, they're also at the back of your throat. Kilo for kilo, the tongue is the strongest muscle in the human body, which makes Stephen's liquor the heavyweight champion of the tongue world. Mm. Now that's amazing. Ouch. We've got loads of amazing body tricks to show you. Here's how to fool your friend's taste buds. This is a good trick, and all you need is a tongue. But the tongue has to be dry, so that's what I'm going to do with this kitchen towel. Now I'm going to take a piece of food, chocolate, and put it on Zahn's tongue. Without looking at his tongue, let's see if Zahn can guess what the food is. Can you tell me what that is? Is it tooth? Is it itchy? Is it tooth? You've lost your keys. Is it tooth? Oh, cheese, why didn't you say? Now, the reason Zahn can't taste it is because the molecules in food that give it flavour need to be dissolved in saliva before you can detect them. OK, Zahn, chew it up in your mouth. So, can you tell me what it is? Chocolate. That's right. And could you taste it with the dry tongue? No. Chris has found a way to take away the taste of chocolate. Why would you do that? You know how much I like chocolate. So, in order for food to have a taste, it must be dissolved in saliva first. Only then can the flavour be detected by our taste buds. Give it a try and see if you can trick your friends. 